name is Mayor Krieger, Professor Emeritus of the Yale School of Medicine. I am an author of Validation of a Smart Ring Oximeter in Individuals with Dark Skin Pigment, published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings Digital Health. I have been using oximeters for almost 40 years. We have known for many years that pulse oximeters may be inaccurate in people with dark skin pigment. This became a public health issue during the COVID pandemic. At that time, there were millions of people who had respiratory uh, symptoms, and they were encouraged to obtain uh, oximeters and stay home, and if things got really bad, for them to contact the healthcare provider. This was now an example of what was happening at that time in 2020. Uh, this is from the National Health Service in the UK, and this kind of thing happened throughout the world. Patients were encouraged to obtain oximeters. In December of 2020, during the height of the COVID pandemic, this letter appeared in the New England Journal. It was called Racial Bias in Pulse Oximetry Measurement. And what it showed is that 17% of black patients had occult hypoxemia versus 6.2% in white patients. Occult hypoxemia was defined when measured pulse oximetry saturation was greater than 92%, but the actual saturation measured by blood gas was 88% or less. Let's quickly review how oximeters work. Oxygenated blood is red. Deoxygenated blood is blue. The color of an object is related to the wavelength of light shining on the object and how much is absorbed and reflected. Oxygenated hemoglobin absorbs the most in the infrared band, while deoxygenated hemoglobin absorbs the most in the red band. Here, we are looking at the anatomy of a finger showing the bones and the circulation. A two-wavelength light transmitter and a receiver placed on either side of a finger. The light transmitted into the vascular bed is scattered, absorbed, and reflected. The amplitude of light detected in particular spectra by the photodetector depends on the magnitude of the change in arterial pulse, the wavelengths transmitted through the arterial vascular bed, and the oxygen saturation of arterial hemoglobin. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of oximeters available for sale in drugstores, medical supply stores, you name it, and of course, on the web. How does the ring oximeter differ from a fingertip oximeter? First of all, the design of the device is such that the sensors right here are on the palmar aspect of the finger, and the ring employs reflectance pulse oximetry. In other words, the light transmitter and the receiver are on the same surface. That is the principle of oximetry in this device. In the research we presented was data on 24 healthy subjects, eight of whom were black, and 16 were non-black. They had arterial catheters inserted. They wore a medical grade finger oximeter and the ring oximeter. They were made progressively hypoxic by breathing in nitrogen in steps. 
and five samples were made at each of these ranges. Baseline, which was generally above 92%, 85 to 91, 78 to 84, and 70 to 77. In other words, samples were obtained from baseline above 92 all the way down to 70%. Here we see the ring SpO2 versus the SaO2 obtained from arterial blood gases. You can see here data from saturation of about 100 all the way down to 70. And we have data in, um, from eight black subjects, 16 non-black subjects. And the regression lines, you can barely see them. They're very, very close to each other, and they're both um, have a slope of around one. So there's very close agreement overall between the ring oxygen saturation and the saturation obtained from arterial blood gases. We also compared the ring SpO2 to the SpO2 as measured by a medical grade oximeter. And as you can see, for both black subjects and non-black subjects, there was very good agreement between the two um, methods of measurement. And here we have the Bland-Altman analyses uh, shown here for the range of oxygen saturations. And again, the bias uh, uh, for black subjects was only minus 0.3%. And for white subjects, it was minus 1.3%. Both of these uh, um, biases are clinically not significant. One possible explanation for the um, good performance of the ring oximeter is that the measurements are made on the palmar aspect of the finger rather than the dorsum of the finger where um, there is more pigment. So it is likely less affected by pigmentation. This is the main finding of our research. The ring oximeter was found to be reasonably accurate in the measurement of SpO2 in both black and non-black subjects in the range between 170% SaO2 when compared to arterial blood gases, which is the gold standard, and a medical grade finger oximeter. Here are caveats and take-home messages. Remember, Validation studies are done in young, healthy subjects in laboratory conditions. There are many sources of SpO2 measurement errors and artifacts that are related to motion, nail polish, abnormal hemoglobin, skin pigment, poor peripheral perfusion, sensor placement, device sampling rate, and signal filtering. The technology is moving very quickly, and if one is going to recommend or use such an oximeter, one should try to seek out validation data. To protect patients, we must understand the technology we are using and prescribing and be aware of possible bias. Thank you for your attention.